have Vince Redmond. He is a licensed marriage and family therapist. He's a regular here on the show. And Vince is not only a licensed marriage and family therapist, but he is also someone who worked for many years as a ABA therapist. So he understands the challenges that families are facing when you're doing that intensive behavioral intervention and how stressful, you know, that can make other right. things stressful, right? right? right. Uh, right. And the fact that other people don't get it makes it stressful. So anyway, welcome back to the show, Vince. Hello. How is everyone? We're, We're thrilled good. to have you. We're, good. We're a little bit nervous because it's back to school time, and that's our yes. topic for today. I was saying and yesterday you could have bounced a quarter off my head because I was wound so tight. Um, and I know that we're not the only ones. No. I'm seeing it all over my, my Autism Mommy Facebook friends. Everybody's like, ah. Uh. Well, we feel out of control because we feel like yes. we don't have that control. That's yes. where it's coming from. So Vince, help us to help ourselves. Because uh, we were talking right before we came on air about the fact that you know, you said sometimes it's it's harder for the parents. And I said, in fact, I think that we're the ones who get stressed and then our kids sense our stress and then, as you said, feed off of it. So talk to us a little bit about what we can do to not feel as out of control as we feel. Well, and I think part of it is is what you guys are explaining now is just being aware of it, right? Being aware of the control, being aware that that's where our anxiety oftentimes comes from is is that inability to control all the moving parts the way we want them to to be. And in a sense, that's a, the way the kids feel too. They too feel a lot of anxiety, not only the anxiety they feel from the parent, but they have anxiety too because they don't know what's going on. And our kids have a very difficult time being able to predict the future, being able to logically understand what the next step's going to be. So when things change in their environment, either be school, classroom, teacher, peers, what have you, that becomes very anxiety producing for them. And that raises our anxiety, right? So it's a, it's a circular, uh, you know, or a circular type of uh, phenomenon when it comes to our anxiety. So being aware of it, being aware of that, it has a lot to do with what we can control and what we cannot is the first step now we're now that we're available and we're aware of what you know is 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 kind of driving that anxiety then we can do things about it right we can focus our energies on the things we can control and then find a place to you know displace some of our our anxiety our anxiousness and other energies on things that we can't control does that make sense it does make sense i you you said the word angst in there and i heard that because i think that's what that's what i've been so for instance i was saying before that I was watching a, a show about India and how they do the laundry by beating it on the rocks and that I sat there and I, not that I want to beat laundry on rocks, but there was a part of me that was like, you know, that kind of intense physical labor, yeah. maybe I need to go do something like that because the, all these feelings have to go somewhere and I'd rather it go somewhere positive. Right, and you can't deny it, right? I mean, it's not something that, that you can just pretend is not there, right? When we have angst, we have anxiety, there's an energy that we have that needs to be released, and sometimes we can you know, we can do it healthy or we can do it not healthy. And again, knowing where we can control or where we can concentrate our energy and our in our anxiety on things that we can make better, things that we can come up with resolutions, I'm I want the parents to be involved. I want the parents to be collaborative with their teachers, with their school districts, with their with their uh, ABA agencies, with their with their therapists, um, but then there's things that that anxiety can't control, and those are things where, and that's times where we need to look at going for walks, to, you know, uh, being involved in other types of hobbies, you know, uh, maybe uh, focusing on different jobs, you know, different types of things around the house, whatever it may be, somewhere where we can focus that anxiety too, or really that energy. Where can that energy go that will be more successful? And oftentimes, as we've all felt and we've all experienced, it's hard to do that. So all that anxiety comes out and oftentimes comes out in a way that that might, you know, that might help, but then it can might also hurt a situation. Well, it does bring home, I was a much better house cleaner this weekend than I normally am uh, because I was scrubbing everything. You uh, used that as an outlet for I, your Like I hadn't angst. thought about it, but that does make sense to me. That's, right. I was like, you know, no, it is time to, you know, completely scrub right. everything in the world down. Um, that kind of makes sense. And then for our kiddos who are feeling anxiety because maybe it's a new school or maybe it's a new teacher or those kinds of things, while we're feeling ang anxious, what can we do to help them and not show them that we're feeling anxious, Vince? 
Right. Well, the, again, that that is a key point right there is trying to, you know, trying to maintain your anxiety and not showing that anxiety with your children, right? When when they're already going to be just naturally anxious with the new things coming up. But how to reduce some of their anxiety? The best thing I that I can think of is priming them, right? Getting them ready for it. talking about the new school, maybe showing them the new classroom, talking about the new peers, maybe talking who's the teacher, making, give them time to process, give them time to understand what changes are coming, and then possibly exposing them to some of those changes prior to when it actually goes into effect. So when school actually starts, they've already been to the classroom or they've already been to the new school or they've already maybe even met the teacher if you went in a couple days early to meet the teacher so when they go to school there's a little bit of familiarity to it and it's not all brand new yeah it kind of takes my breath away all of it i know it does it just seems like you're adding more layers of responsibility but and these are important things to do absolutely and i think part of it for me, you know, I thought this was going to get easier. The yeah. older Jem got and the better he got, I thought this was going to be that much easier. But the truth is, is that the goalposts for me got moved further away. Right. So when he was in second grade, I absolutely did all the things that you just mentioned, Vince, that we went, we met the teacher, we did all this stuff. But, you know, he started high school and I can't go in and, ha- and be there and introduce him to the teacher. I just had to pull up to the gate and have him go on in. And you know what? He's fine. Let's be clear about that. He's dealing fine well, with all of it. at least you recognize it. that. It's me. But you recognize that. Yeah. But it's but that does mean, <laughs> yes, it <laughs> well, does mean a, a smidge of good, I guess, to recognize well, and that. And to Nancy's point, she was saying, you know, you had made a point of this is more added responsibility, which could actually, you know, give you more anxiety or more angst. And I think of it just the opposite. I think that the, as the parent as well, when you get to know the lay of the land, you know where your child's going to go. You've met your the teacher that the child's going to be with, and you've spoken with them. You've kind of given them a little rundown. I would hope that your anxieties or, or all the parents' anxieties would be a little bit less because now they've, they've prepared the environment as best they can, right? There's obviously a lot of things that we have no control over, but making sure that we, 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 the kid, the family, everybody has seen the environment, talked to the environment, interacted, engaged in the environment prior to it going into effect, hopefully will lower the anxiety for the whole family. And Vince, we just had somebody write in and say, I have three children on the spectrum, all three get anxiety, and I am well aware that if I show any signs of anxiety myself, it in turn amplifies theirs. Wow. Right. Kudos to you with three children on the spectrum and dealing with all of the anxiety that goes with that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why talking about those, those anxious situations or those, those, those triggers that cause the anxiety with the kids is good. It normalizes it. It's not taboo. It's not something that, that needs to be kept, you know, kept quiet or kept away. You know, we're talking about what makes them anxious. It could be a new environment. It could be new people. It could be sounds. It could be just the typical anxiety that we all feel they just don't know how to express it so So you're saying address it and talk to them about it rather than redirect like when my son says i'm nervous about going back to school it's too hard for me Mm -hmm. right to talk about it and again each you know each family and child are at different levels and we have to be careful of you know perseverating and and doing you know things for negative attention so i mean it's not as easy you know i can't say specifically what is going to work for everyone however in general when you're talking about anxiety you tend to have less anxiety after you have some exposure to it right so if we're talking about it and we find out that let's say that uh, why it's anxious because he doesn't know who the teachers are going to be okay that's, that's understandable, it makes sense, but we have to get to what actually is making him anxious, not just, well, I'm not going. But And I think it's the same litmus test for the rest of us. I'm somebody who has a great deal of anxiety and I will be at home sometimes and I will say to my husband, I'm feeling very anxious right now. And my husband will say, well, why? Why are you feeling anxious? And I say, well, you know, I don't know. And it's this and it's that. And I kind of, you know, verbalize whatever. 
And then if I, 10 minutes later, said to him, I'm feeling very anxious right mm -hmm. now, he would say, but you know, you said that a few minutes ago, is it still the same as it was before? And and quite and this is this actually happens because then I will say again I'm feeling really anxious and then my husband knows not to respond when I'm saying it the third time right, like right. he just he does he he like doesn't attend to it mm -hmm. because it's me cycling yeah you know and I think it's the same thing with our kids the first time they bring it up I think we we owe it to ourselves and to them to have the conversation but then if we're ju if it's just a thing that we're on the habit trail mm -hmm. of it and anxiety is like that sometimes it's just I'm throwing it out. Out there but but they don't respond right and that's when it, in going to nancy that's when it's redirected to something else yeah, yeah. my they husband don't. will try to distract when me. they start to fixate on it yes right. yeah because right. that doesn't i can tell you it doesn't help me right. um that's getting that's the time to get engaged in another task that's a time to get engaged in another conversation or something like that so that the child has the interaction but they have a place like we were saying for the adults to displace some of that energy um doing something else